Hello and welcome to today's live Stalls TV class, an Industry Ignited 2.0, Trends for 2017. I'm Josh Ellsworth and I'll be your presenter today. And this is a class that happens once a, once a year. We, we start our inaugural one last year and I'm really excited for all of the trend information that we've compiled to share with you. So uh, as always, when you're through the GoToWebinar client, if you want to ask a question, feel free to chat that in. Uh, Karen will be helping today, and if there's questions, she'll stop the presentation and direct those in at various times. And then also, uh, we'll be having a survey after the class, and the questions are kind of uh, unique this time if you've attended a live class before, and that we want to understand the goals for your business for 2017. So we're hoping you can share at least uh, a direction or one goal for your business in 2017. And that will allow us at Stalls TV to really uh, tailor content that aligns with your business goals. Uh, because that's really our objective here at Stalls TV is to inspire you and to help you grow your business. And so that's why um, this trends class is so important to us. And we spend a lot of time uh, putting together all this information. And uh, just so you know, it's not just my ideas. Personally, we have an entire content team uh, that connects out with our blank apparel partners, that uh, researches uh, successful customers and online industry trends uh, so we can bring all of these tips to you that you can hopefully execute uh, this coming year and beyond in your business. So today's presentation is divided in three parts. We have about an hour and a half together and we'll see how I do on timing. Uh, but there's three sections. We're gonna talk about blank apparel styles, number one, and what's trending uh, relative to blank apparel. So as you might imagine, our blank apparel partners such as Sanmar, uh, J America, Bella Canvas, uh, Cavio, Boxercraft, um, to name a few, have contributed uh, and sent us their latest blank apparel styles that we'll be able to share with you. Um, also, the second section is decoration and design. That's where we'll get specifically into uh, decoration trends onto apparel and also design trends for logos. And then last but not least, it'll be sales and marketing. And we've pulled heavily from a online uh, internet report, a case study, where we have a, a ton of insight to share with you relative to uh, making your business successful in its sales and marketing and product strategy. So without further, further ado, let's go into the blank apparel section of today's class. Number one is what's hot. And our first trend that we want to point out here is that uh, softness is really what sells. And we're seeing a lot of uh, trending garments that communicate uh, visual interest or add uh, texture to the garment without necessarily having an extra uh, treatment. It's actually woven into the fabric. So some spe specific things that we want to point out here is uh, tri-blends. And we've been reporting on tri-blends. They've been growing in popularity for the last couple years. And everything we're hearing from our Blank Apparel uh, partners is that tri-blends continue to grow in popularity. So if you're not familiar with what a tri-blend is, uh, basically, it's a combination of cotton, polyester, and rayon. Those are the three fabrics that make up the tri and the blended fabric. And uh, typically, these garments are viewed as a more premium garment. They have a softer hand, and often you're able to get uh, better visual texture out of the garment, such as uh, heathered shades is a, is a natural um, extension of a tri-blend that we're seeing out there. And uh, manufacturers are able to do that because of the synthetic uh, fabric that's used. And so tri-blends are definitely one of those things that I would recommend that you incorporate into your business and you can typically find those uh, priced just slightly higher than a basic t-shirt and you can command a higher price for them if you sell them as super soft. They have a, a nice drape to them, a nice fit to them uh, typically and they're extremely popular um, in all markets, not just uh, young men's and juniors but also ladies and children's apparel um, and are trending in tri-blends. Now some other things uh, to look for is that heathered pattern and uh, not only that but stripe pattern. So we're seeing uh, incorporated into uh, design work um, a lot of that visual texture. So whether this is a tri-blend garment like we're seeing in the top right or whether it's a performance wear garment, we're seeing a lot of that heathered effect and that visual texture added to all styles. Um, the garment on the left that you're looking at there was actually pulled from uh, Nike's website, one of their top selling items. So you can see how it has the sort of variegated um, striping uh, throughout the construction of the garment. So this allows a wearer to be bold uh, with the look, but also um, still be uh, simplistic in the style. And this lends itself great to placing different designs onto the garment. Uh, the garment on the right you see 
is uh, from Sanmar, and you can see they're taking a lot of these trends from retail and, and translating it over into the wholesale market. So um, you'll definitely see a lot of growth in softer heather and texture. And I have some examples that have been sent in from our different blank apparel um, suppliers that I'd like to share with you. And so we have a whole garment rack full of stuff that we'll be sharing today. So if we can uh, bring it in a little bit closer here, we have the, oh, sorry, it's number off. There you go. So we have the alternative um, apparel line. This is a line that's been uh, picked up and sold in select styles from Sanmar. So within that alternative line, you'll see a lot of the softer uh, construction. So that's definitely um, somewhere you can go and look. Um, also, Bella Canvas has a ton of stuff. So I believe we have a close-up angle there on 4 Karen. Um, you can see a lot of the uh, texture um, showing up in these garments that make them extremely popular. And on this one, we actually have the district made line from Sanmar where you start to get a sort of a speckled or a dot pattern in the garment. So any of these effects are going to be um, extremely popular. Of course, uh, we've showed early, last year that we have the static print from uh, Cavio that also adds that visual texture to the garment with still the flat surface, which makes it easier to decorate. Um, now, additionally, we're seeing this even translate over uh, to fleece. So we've gotten some blanks in from J America, but you can see a lot of um, this sort of visual texture, static prints, um, this variegated striping um, in designs is popular. Um, and so this is actually a Sanmar garment, a sport tech. Um, we have some J America pieces that actually um, go with a contrast color um, hood or uh, laces, which is also uh, becoming popular. So anytime you can add visual texture um, to the garment uh, or get something that's softer, um, it's going to be extremely popular. It's going to sell better. It's going to allow you to command higher profit for a piece. So I definitely would uh, recommend jumping on that trend. So the next thing in blank apparel that we want to share is that color blocking uh, continues strong. So you're looking at the Anorak jacket from uh, Pennant Sportswear there on screen, but color blocking um, it's pretty simple. It's basically the inclusion of contrast colors or complementing colors um, in the piping of the garment, in different areas of the garment, often uh, even on just the uh, side seams or the hem of the garment. And color blocking really works well uh, in any market. So whether it's streetwear, spirit apparel, corporate attire, or even children's apparel, we see the um, addition of color blocking being something um, extremely popular. And so you'll see it um, in a lot of different constructions. We have the uh, a garment here from Pennant Sportswear that's a quarter zip um, where you see the color blocking on the top shoulder and also inside of the collar uh, for an added detail. You see um, another Pennant garment, but you see sort of color blocking in horizontal stripes across the garment and also in the contrast color hood being extremely popular. And then Cavio sent in some new uh, racerback tanks that can be used in the juniors or children's market that have color blocking. Um, these are going to be coming out in spring or summer of 2017, where you can actually see the contrast color there. And also down at the um, hemline, we're getting the contrast uh, color as well. So just um, subtle pops of color uh, tend to be popular. This was a very popular um, piece from the district line from Sanmar, where it actually has uh, color blocked mesh inserts for the sleeve. And this is great for spirit wear applications as well. So you start to see um, color blocking uh, continuing to come alive, even in the oversized garments. Um, the spirit jerseys, you have some that are two-tone in the top and bottom. Um, this is a perfect garment to uh, decorate for because you can include that sort of contrast color in your design and make it integrate well with the piece. Now, of course, it can present a challenge depending on how you're printing because it, it, it can look pretty bad if you have a red garment that's intended to match the red sleeves um, or a red decoration that's intended to match the red sleeves and you get off a, a shade. So you want to make sure that um, you have color swatches of your heat transfer film available to match up or your ink colors available from your uh, screen printing ink manufacturer or transfer manufacturer. And if you have digital printing capability, um, specifically with uh, print cut technology, you can print a color chart and match um, any of these contrast colors, which makes for a well thought out integrated design, especially when you look at um, the color blocking being very popular on synthetic like fabrics. So that's definitely a trend that we'll continue um, to see uh, happening in 2017. 
The next thing that I want to point out is necklines, hemlines, fringe, ruffles, and oh, the raglan. And so this one um, has to do with some of the details on the garment. And we see a lot of these trends happening um, relative to the children's apparel market and also uh, ladies apparel. And so you're looking at the bottom left there, you see a, a macrame fringe garment from Cavio uh, that we've decorated uh, previously on Stalls TV in one of our tutorial videos. So we're seeing the growth of fringe and more styles coming out um, in fringe. It was very popular in 2016. And I think you'll continue to see that in early 2017, especially uh, as spring rolls around. Uh, fringe tends to lend itself well uh, there with the garments that are available. Also, um, hemlines, so just um, things like a high-low garment, the second garment from the left that you see there, uh, also from Cavio, where you have um, just sort of a, a different style where the top's a little shorter than the back of the garment than the shirt tail. So this is popular uh, in ladies' apparel as well, and there's some different styles I'll show to you. Um, that, that shows um, a different hemline. And then ruffles, something uh, that we're seeing a lot. So this particular garment uh, that the lady's wearing there, the young girl in green, um, shows ruffles not only at the sleeve of the garment, but at the bottom hem of the garment and the bottom of the pant leg. And this uh, particular style was picked up from a company called ARB Blanks, which is very popular in the children's market for um, folks that may be selling on uh, marketplaces such as Etsy or have their own um, online children's boutique. You see a lot of uh, ruffles growing in that children's market, especially for um, girls. Um, and then last but not least is the raglan, and this is a piece that we've seen uh, sort of transcend all age groups, both male and female. We're looking at a garment from uh, Victoria's Secret here that shows you a three-quarter sleeve uh, raglan that's been decorated, but also another garment that is um, extremely popular in children's apparel. Um, also is growing in the men's market as well with a typical um, baseball theme styling um, on the raglan. So let's take a, a couple uh, looks here of what we have. And then the other thing that's happening, um, this sort of follows up on the last piece where we, you know, sort of contrast color and color blocked and you get the visual texture. Um, necklines was something else that was mentioned in that previous slide. So you're seeing, you know, this is a hoodie, but you see a lot of higher necklines, um, not traditional necklines on hoodies or even uh, typical just fleece garments becoming popular. So that's something, a little extra detail to look for when you're sourcing a garment. And this particular piece is from J America as well. So relative to um, hemlines, uh, here's a boxer craft piece where it's actually, you see the uh, shirt tail is longer, so you get a little bit of a high-low cut. You also get a um, contrast color, specifically in a pattern, which uh, patterns continue to grow in popularity as well as an accent color. And then you also have the uh, raglan cut to the sleeves, especially when you look at the back um, of the garment, you get that styling all in one piece. Uh, boxer craft always launches a ton of uh, new styles as well. Here's the garment you saw um, from Cavio where you get the stripe back and you get the high-low cut. And the nice thing about this particular piece is it's available um, in children's apparel all the way up through um, the juniors market and ladies cuts, which allows you to sort of have a unified look ac across the group, specifically you know, for markets that may buy this, like a dance school where you can do the mommy and me looks or the paired looks, which is something else um, that we see happening a lot. Uh, Cavio also has some new fringe pieces um, that are going to be coming out um, for you. And we have the style numbers of all of these pieces that we can share with you um, sort of as a follow-up um, to today's class. But if you have any um, specific questions on styles that are coming in, Karen, um, let us know. We can always um, stop and answer those. Um, and then last but not least is the Raglan from LAT um, Apparel, which is the, the group. And we actually purchased this from SNS Activewear. But you can source a Raglan. Um, from a variety of places, and we see it um, still growing um, in popularity and a great piece um, that helps you sort of um, have that white canvas or ash gray canvas to customize on because typically um, the body of the garment is light color and then you have the um, contrast color on the sleeve. If you're direct to garment printing, you know that it's extremely uh, convenient and quicker to print on light or white based uh, fabric. So the raglan's a great piece for direct-to-garment printing as well. Um, the next trend that I want to show you relative to blank apparel is uh, typical for um, streetwear or even uh, young men's apparel. Um, and you see short sleeve hoodies. We reported on this last year, but I think they're finally 
uh, moving from uh, retail into the wholesale market. Um, the piece on the left here is from Bella Canvas um, in their fast fashion line. So they, they actually launched a whole collection of trendy pieces in their fast fashion line. Um, their American Apparel also has um, a short sleeve hoodie. Those are two off the top of my head that I know are available. These are extremely popular um, out there in the young men's market and also the drop shoulder t-shirt. So on the right, while it may look like a typical t-shirt, you actually have a lower cut on the seam structure of the shoulders where they start. So these are um, extremely popular as well. And we'll get a close up look at these when we look at some of the design trends um, for these sort of types and, and styles of pieces. Next that we want to um, highlight is the flat bill gives way to the dad hat. So I don't think, you know, we reported last year about the flat bill hats um, being extremely popular. Um, they're still popular and you're still able to print the flat bill hats, which would be like the um, new era 5950s. Um, Flexfit has a brand um, that they sell. AutoCap has a brand. So you can still do the flat bill hats. They're still holding strong, but you're starting to see professional athletes and uh, folks in the sports world move to the dad hat. I think, you know, wearables or ASI uh, reported on this trend um, in their um, online piece and said, you know, showed a picture of LeBron James wearing the dad hat um, at a championship parade after the Cavs won the championship uh, in the middle of last year. And so we're starting to see this sort of picked up and trickle down from uh, pop culture um, down to the decoration market. So AutoCap has a great line of dad hats. It's actually a whole section on their website. And the thing I love about this, especially for heat printers, is it's so easy um, to print these hats because if you look at the photo here, it's typically a uh, very soft crown. So you don't have the um, fused buckram that gives you sort of the crease on the hats when you typically heat print those that have the um, hard backing or hard crown. Um, this is soft uh, style, it's a low profile style, so it's extremely easy to print. Um, these have been popular sort of in the uh, ladies market um, for a while with designs that are printed from the crown of the cap down to the bill in rhinestones or glitter, but now they're becoming equally popular um, for the men's market just for a front print and placement. So I would definitely recommend uh, showcasing uh, some of these styles as we move to uh, 2017. All right, Karen, are there any questions coming in before I move to um, the next section relative to blank apparel styles? Do you have any information on off-the-shoulder sweatshirts? Off-the-shoulder sweatshirts. So there are um, quite a few suppliers that have the sort of off-the-shoulder um, sweatshirts. I know we're going to be doing a whole uh, blank apparel uh, sourcing guide uh, coming up, I believe it's in uh, February. Um, from Stalls TV, but from the top of my head, I know Boxercraft has one that's called the Flashback uh, Fleece that has that off-the-shoulder look and also has the pocket like a hoodie. It's sort of a, a, a scoop neck design. Um, I believe that uh, Bella Canvas has one, if memory serves me right. Karen's given me the yes. Uh, do you know anybody else that might have one? And Alternative Apparel has one um, available through the Sandmar line, so those would be um, three uh, different options. Any other questions coming in? All right, we're good. So that's a little bit on blank apparel styles uh, for this year's trend report. So I would recommend that uh, definitely connecting to um, softer styles is going to be important. There's one more piece that I know I didn't show in the, in the scheme of it here, and those were a couple pieces that I found extremely nice from J America. And these are actually a dip dyed piece. So while it's not a tri-blend, um, this garment has a ton of rayon content in it. So it's over 90% rayon is the content of this garment. And I mean, this is ridiculously soft when you feel it. It also has some stretch to it. So it'd be extremely comfortable to wear. It also is getting that sort of visual texture through a dip dye treatment that's completed on the rayon. So you get sort of um, some variation in color around the seams specifically and lower on the garment. And then you also have the um, high-low hemline on this as well. So I think, you know, they call this the Oasis, but this would be um, a really nice piece. It is extremely challenging to decorate when you start going into this um, high rayon content or even the tri-blends with getting scorch marks. So you want to make sure that you continue to look for low temperature adhesives that can be applied to these styles of garments. And as we know, um, historically, printing synthetic fabrics with direct-to-garment printing has been challenging. Um, 
if you can print it, you need to make sure you can post cure it at a low temperature on these synthetic fabrics to make sure you're not getting scorching. Okay, there's a question coming in. Do you have any suggestions for where to find sweatshirts with front pockets and no hoods? Yeah, so the Boxer Craft has a front pocket and no hood um, on a sweatshirt um, for ladies. So, and I think there's one more question coming in. We'll take that. What was the style number for the J America shirts that you just showed? So the J America shirts, and Karen was nice enough to write all the styles and numbers on the inside here in masking tape in case you ask these questions. All right, uh, this one's 8127 is the J America style um, that we just showed. Okay. So let's uh, move on to our um, next section here. Um, and so this one is going to be uh, decoration and design. And so this is an area that at Stalls TV we're very familiar with, um, decoration and design. That's all we do here is uh, find these garments and come up with uh, decoration and design specifically in the area of heat printing uh, to customize. So one of the things that we're seeing um, a lot of is uh, typography is trending in new styles. So typography is basically just the use of text and the style element of text onto any item and we're seeing specifically for the apparel market that the way we use text in fonts um, is changing and there's a lot of sort of creative interpretation on text that makes it seem like more of a cohesive design and so this is good news specifically for the vinyl cutter owner because it's very easy uh, to cut weed and heat apply text um, when you're working with heat transfer vinyl it's also uh, for the screen printer or any other decorator, it's, it's really easy. So some of the things that we're seeing is mixing font styles. So um, the kind is the new beautiful. This was pulled from uh, Justice. You see a lot of mixing and matching of different font styles, often uh, something bold, something thin, and then something with script that creates a cohesive design where the fonts um, overlap each other and often different design elements are placed uh, between the text or within the text um, to add interest or style. We also see a ton of the reverse out effect happening. So whether it's the same garment we just referenced, the Columbia blue one on the top center of the screen, or whether it's the yoga pants that we pulled from Victoria's Secret, where you see the sport is sort of knocked out of the background design, or the one in the bottom right where my superpower is making chocolate. Um, you see a lot of these punch out effects happening in fonts where we're doing a, a reverse weed workflow for heat transfer film. Um, something else you also see is a lot of the split text uh, effects. So we see it on the Under Armour piece, whether it's from corner to corner or horizontally across the text where we've split up the text into two or three um, colorways with very simple uh, lines through. So you have seen this on the sidelines perhaps if you've watched any uh, NFL or college football. A lot of the coaches shirts that are done by Nike or Under Armour have this effect. So you see it a lot in the athletic uh, sort of sportswear inspired, inspired world. Now you also see a lot of uh, no holes design. And so the example here on the left, uh, my dance season never ends. Um, this is great for people that don't like to weed heat transfer film because you can see the center of the letters are punched out so I don't have on some of the letters the cavities um, to go out and peel away. And so in the design aspect, we've done a ton of tutorials on Stalls TV on how to design this. You're just going to break apart that text, delete out the centers of the designs you don't want, and it's popular and it saves you time. Um, we also see trends in open fonts where you have sort of an outside edge of the font but the center uh, punched out. So a lot of new um, text-based designs that are trending and you can get a close look um, at, them, at them there. The next thing we see trending a lot is antlers, arrows, and animals. So just design elements really that create um, a cohesive piece. And so you see the geometric sort of animal uh, lion that you see on the left hand side. Um, it would be a nightmare to cut and weed all these different layers if you're using a vinyl cutter. But if you have a digital printing technology at your fingertips, being able to mix and match and leverage the full color capability um, specific uh, for creating multicolor interest on uh, geometric designs. Also just including uh, clip art elements like arrows and antlers um, into the design is extremely popular, even on those mix and match font styles uh, that we mentioned on the previous slide. Arrows, if you've looked at children's apparel or ladies apparel, um, you know that it's you know, bent arrows or straight arrows or just things pointing different directions is a very popular 
uh, design element that you can create with. Next, for sportswear uh, specifically, we've always talked about the trending tone-on-tone uh, -tone or tonal effects um, that are out there. But this one specifically, it's sort of like all black everything, black on black um, when it comes to the decoration in the garment. So while tonal effects are popular across the line, I think really black on black has emerged as the primary trend and design style out there. Um, so you're seeing from a lot of the major athletic brands where you have uh, different levels of black. So often, like in the Nike garment, you'll see um, a gloss black on a matte black shirt. Um, you also see often the combination of both uh, black and charcoal in the design to give that sort of blackout or lights out effect for sports and street apparel. And I have a couple samples that I'd like to show you um, of that. Here's a good example that we recently launched in our uh, Project Press It series where we've actually combined um, the thermofilm black, which is a gloss black um, that we have on the garment. We have a charcoal up in the top of the design here. We have more thermofilm and then we've added flock and glitter um, to striping. And so this is on one of those uh, short sleeve hoodie styles from Bella Canvas. Um, so you're seeing a lot trending in sport and street where you have the tonal effects across the garment. Now another cool interpretation of this um, I have back here would be uh, reflective black. So here you get the um, reflective black that actually when lights hit it, it returns light back to the source and reflects in silver. So by day you get that tonal effect and by night when lights hit it, um, you get that reflectivity. And so we also um, have paired this with uh, reflective decoration black on black on the shoe. And of course these are the um, some new styles where you get, if I can find it here, where you get that fun light up effect. If you've been to a mall shopping for Christmas, you've probably seen this. Um, but these shoes were just sourced from Amazon and you get the light up effect. But J America um, actually sent this garment in and it has uh, the light up effect or the illumination um, across the zipper. Uh, complementing the garment. So it's sort of just something fun and unique that may command a higher value uh, for your shop. Let's see if I can turn these off so I don't waste the battery. There we go. So a lot of that lights out sort of sports and spirit wear black on black tonal is a great way to go. Of course just putting a simple black ink color on a black garment works well. You can also look to leverage uh, clear matte or clear gloss materials that are available or clear ink to give you that tonal effect um, on darks. We also see um, in the image um, on the LeBron James logo that you have the uh, raised effect on the garment as well. So you're seeing a lot of left chest small logos that bring dimension out um, that have been happening uh, for quite a few years, um, specifically with silicone inks uh, for screen printing. The next thing we want to uh, look at is foil being the hottest finish. So glitter has been uh, something that's been popular for quite a few years, five or six years. Um, I always get the question, is glitter falling off? The same question I got about rhinestones probably five years ago. Um, I still think glitter strong. All of our sales reporting shows that glitter is strong and growing. Um, I don't think we can say it's a trend anymore. I think it's a mainstay, uh, but I think foil is growing as sort of the hottest finish for uh, the second half of 2016 leading into 2017. So leveraging foil in your design work um, is a great way to go and uh, today's foils are more durable than ever so we're showing you some other concepts here where you may uh, create um, uh, sort of a mom and me uh, matching set with foil but gold foil, rose gold are two popular colors. Um, also this shows you integrated design where we're incorporating glitter uh, within uh, the garment itself and sort of cutting it off on the seam. This also speaks to the color block trend on these oversized garments. And then, I'll jump back one more and move over. Um, you can see the one of the other things we have here is uh, foil on oversized. So this is um, a color of foil that is uh, sort of a rainbow silver um, that tends to be popular not only for female fashion but for uh, menswear as well. So when you look at um, heat transfer foil, there's really, um, it's a pretty easy process. Um, if you have a uh, vinyl cutter, you can just buy a roll of adhesive, 
cut it, weed it, and heat apply it, and then put foil on top of it, sort of as a finishing step. And there's some really unique, uh, unique effects that you can do, um, such as crumbling up the foil to create two-tone. And I have a couple samples I wanted to um, show you of, of that. So this one, um, and we'll probably need a close-up on this. You see the, you get a um, purple finish with a uh, teal finish in the foil applied on a performance wear, but you can see sort of the sparkle coming off of it. Um, here we have just a simple single color of orange foil, and here we've mixed foil in gold with a flat color, which is our neon punch, which was a, probably a trending color in 2016. Uh, still seeing it uh, pretty active in the footwear market, but foil and sort of mixing, matching, um, using that in different ways is definitely something that we would recommend incorporating into your design style for 2017. And of course, uh, the, the cool thing about foil, it only costs, I mean, the process takes a little longer, but it only costs um, 10 cents, uh, roughly 10 cents for a square foot of foil to do a print. So you're really not adding that much cost in the process for somebody to go from a basic red design to a foil red design. So. It's, it's a great opportunity for markup as well. So the next design trend that was sort of a finished trend is um, when you look at decoration and logos, I would say monogramming is huge right now. Uh, you know, names have been popular uh, for as long as I've been in the industry, but monogramming you know, is a traditional sort of technique in embroidery that has been around for some time, but I'd say it's fresher now and you have that sort of renewed interest in monogramming uh, specifically um, because of what you're able to do with heat transfer films and what you're able to print and the effects you're able to get. So this is uh, Louis Vuitton pieces that are being sold with monogramming on their site where you can see different colors and striping. And when you look at heat transfer film and monograms, you can do unique things like pattern prints and glitter um, to add extra style. So the piece in the center there is actually um, done with rip away applique and it's a floral print. Um, that was printed onto express print. So patterns are very popular for monogramming. You can see in the um, tablet case there in the bottom left with the Avery um, name drop, we have a patterned effect mixed with a glitter effect. So not only being able to do monograms in general onto items, but being able to do unique items as well, such as the uh, wristlet or the makeup pouch you see there, as well as the um, footwear. So with the right heat press, with the right material, we know that you can load and print on practically any fabric, and monogramming is popular even just beyond the wearables uh, world. It goes into accessories as well, and so a monogram is something that um, I would recommend merchandising right now. You see a lot of the big brands uh, getting into monogramming different products, and at Stalls TV, uh, we'll actually be launching a monogram guide uh, here in January that will give you all of the um, insight and intel on how to arrange the letters, some popular fonts for monogramming, and we have a couple of videos um, already on the site to help you with that. Any questions coming in, Karen? Can you explain what slub cotton is and what styles fall under that type of cotton? Yeah, so something else in the, in the visual texture um, that's been trending is uh, slub cotton, so where you don't have a synthetic um, in the fabric and you need to get that sort of uh, variance uh, to the piece. Uh, slub cotton is basically um, an uneven uh, sort of length on the cotton. So in the manufacturing process where it's sewn, there's some inconsistency in the cotton. And so basically you get this uh, feel of the garment where it's almost bumpy or textured and it's random. So you could say almost like a distressed cotton. So the face of it is not completely flat like you would get in say, um, a normal uh, ring spun cotton where we're going for an extremely smooth sort of even uh, surface that makes it ideal for like direct to garment printing. With slub the goal is um, you're looking for that variance in the surface itself so you get that texture um, to the fabric. I don't think I have a, a slub cotton piece here but you see this often. Um, I know that there's an oversized sort of v-neck shirt from Boxercraft that's a slub cotton so you get that um, variation in the design. It's not hard to heat print at all. It doesn't really react uh, different to printing. The film um, itself or the transfer just sort of conforms and covers um, the bumps on the cotton, just like it would go over a seam if you've ever applied it over seams. 
And could you explain the process for mixing the different colors of foils? Yeah, so um, we have uh, one of our most viewed uh, videos actually on our Stalls TV site is a complete guide to success with heat transfer foil. So that's going to be a 45 minute class that goes in depth on foil. Um, I'd recommend watching that if you're new to foil. But to get the different colors of the foil, basically all you need to do if you want the distressed effect is you crumble up the first layer of foil you're getting ready to apply, then flatten it out and it creates these grooves or gaps in the foil print. When you press that down and then peel it cold, basically you have a distressed design where adhesive is still exposed through that first color. And so all I do is I take a second color and I lay that completely flat on top of that and do a second application and it'll fill in all the gaps. And then of course you can vary um, the, the color levels by how much you distress that first piece and lay it down. So you can get a completely uh, unique effect every time. Okay, I think there's one more question. How durable is foil and how does it hold up during the wash cycle? Okay, so another good question on foil. Foil, um, with the process of using CAD cut adhesive and foil um, from stalls, which is what I know has been lab tested, is uh, 25 cycles uh, before you start to see any breakdown at all. Um, the, and that means wash um, and dry. The thing you have to consider if you're going to dry foil it's going to take it from that high sort of mirror-like sheen and it's going to make it a little bit of a lower luster sheen. So it's still durable, it'll just change the finish on it. Um, so I'd recommend tagging your foil garments um, with, with saying that you may want to hang dry, that way it maintains that true mirror effect. Okay, we good? All right, excellent. So the last thing um, that I want to show relative um, actually, I have two more things. So the next to the last thing is uh, sort of color trends. And so Pantone has released their 2017 color of the year uh, from a design and, and decoration trend. And we see that uh, greenery is the color of the year. And they've also released their top 10 colors for spring of 2017. And you can see those to the right there. Um, typically, you start to see a lot of these show up in blank apparel. Um, finishes and styles that are going to be available. Um, a lot of these look like um, good spring uh, summer colors obviously since it's the spring 2017 report. So this is something that you should expect to see um, in your blank apparel styles and you'll probably want to look um, to stock some of these colors in your store especially if you have a customer um, with a good fashion sense and likes to stay on trend with colors. Um, another cool thing is that when you look at colors, um, school colors for fan gear don't have to be just school colors anymore. So there's the opportunity if you're decorating for a team that has a certain color set for spirit wear you can be creative and match some of these trending colors to deliver something more on trend and fashionable uh, for that spirit apparel. And we've seen that a lot really in uh, professional sports where you know I think we started with an alternate jersey, a third jersey, and now it seems like there's a fourth, a fifth, there's a jersey for every occasion. And so it leaves a lot of freedom um, as far as choosing uh, color combinations and getting really creative in the styling um, relative to uh, supporting a team for school spirit. Um, so a lot of opportunity there to leverage some of those colors. If you have digital printing, of course, it's awesome because you can actually print, print the Pantone equivalent and you don't have to wait for it to become available in a roll of vinyl or whatever it may be. Um, the other thing that I want to go through relative to decoration and design trends is really some of the uh, logo design trends that we see happening in 2017. And so this uh, particular piece was taken from um, a report here by a company called Creato, and this is their infograph um, where they predicted this, uh, these design trends that they're seeing. So number one is you're starting to see with logo design is designs that are minimalist in appearance, um, both uh, practical and purpose driven. And why this would be important is when we talk about the web trends, it's very important to have a logo that can be uh, seen and maintain the brand recognition when it's sized down to be small. Um, so if you ever have to work with logos or if you're picking technology to print with logos, um, it's nice to know that often um, the logos are becoming more simplistic in nature and easier to recreate. Um, thus, they also work better in a mobile environment when it comes to uh, viewing products, logos, web pages on a mobile phone. Um, you also see that 
we're seeing sort of more personality. Here we see the sort of hand-drawn look, and this also speaks to the trend of mixing and matching fonts. You see um, a script font and something that's a little bit more uh, unique, quirky um, in the design. Also, the use of negative space. And so when you're creating designs, not only is this cool for um, logos, but when you're creating uh, design concepts for people is using negative space um, in the design. Uh, basically, this is a way just to make it look cooler and is extremely popular when you look at social sites such as Pinterest and Instagram. Uh, consistent line thickness is something um, that also uh, they're reporting on is trending. So popular among new and modern businesses, but if you're creating logos and you view yourself more as a logo consultant and you have sort of branding as part of your product offering, uh, consider um, this sort of styling. And then last but not least is sort of that uh, nostalgic element to the designs that you can achieve through uh, clip art elements and the layout uh, for different types of a bus business, especially those um, that have been around for a while or want to communicate that sense of authenticity. So um, I couldn't say it better than these folks as far as the um, logo design trends. So for that reason, I thought, let's just share the, the info that's already out there. And as I mentioned, a lot of this is just curating the content and delivering it to you in a way that makes sense here from Stalls TV. Right, any other questions relative to the decoration and design? Um, there are a lot of things happening in the industry. Obviously, there's a, a X amount of time we have with each other here. And so for that reason, you know, things like all over sublimation that are trending, um, that are happening out there and have been for some while, um, I didn't choose to include in this report because I thought I want, you know, I wanted to make it relevant specific to um, some of the design techniques. Uh, but from a decoration side, I see foil as one of the biggest things uh, happening in 2017 um, that you should jump on. Let's go to marketing and sales. So this is really um, where the, the rubber meets the road. So we've taken um, some work, um, went through some blank apparel. You probably have some ideas for things you want to source. Hopefully you have some ideas for um, new design styling or decoration uh, that you want to execute. And it really comes down to how do I sell in 2017 and what's happening out there um, that would impact my ability to grow sales as a company. And so I have um, a lot of different slides here um, that were uh, taken from a, a great report. Um, and you can maybe want to jot down that URL if you want to see the full 250 page, I believe, report that happened at the Internet Trends uh, Code Conference here by KPCB. Um, but I've sort of went through that whole um, report and pulled out some of the, the concepts that I thought were relevant um, that I'd like to point out to you uh, relative to growing sales of your decorated apparel business. So one of the most important slides um, and most important trends that are happening uh, relative to uh, buyers is who is buying? Where is the spending power? Where is it trending? Where is the shift? And so we put uh, millennials as sort of a, a population or a generation um, as an age group are increasing spending power uh, tremendously. And that's, of course, expected to grow every year that we uh, move forward in time versus, um, versus other groups based on the sheer size of the millennial age group. So if you look at the population by age range with the census data from 2014, you'll see that um, it's a large buying group. If you add up that 15 to 34 year old buying group, um, you see a lot of the buying decisions uh, being made by millennials. So if you have a product um, that appeals to young folks, uh, millennials, I say young folks because I'm still on the very top tier of that age group. I want to consider myself young still. Um, you can see that there's an extreme amount of buying power that's shifting. So with that in mind, we have to ask with the buying power shifting, how is the advertising uh, shifting? How do those things align? So if millennials have the majority of the buying power, um, leading into the future, how are advertisers or retail brands um, shifting as far as how they're reaching that group or groups overall? And what I want you to gather from this particular chart is that you'll see um, internet advertising growth, which is a great way um, to grow your sales and connect your products uh, to an audience outside of just your local audience. You'll see that mobile is growing at a tremendous rate versus desktop as far as how people are um, interacting or spending ad dollars. 
And so we see that mobile advertising spend is up 66% versus desktop at just 5%. So what that would imply is the trend is you need to make sure that your website is mobile friendly. You need to make sure it's a responsive um, sort of design because people are interacting uh, with your ads, with your website on mobile. So it goes without saying that you should have a website, you should have um, a presence online if you plan to sell your products beyond the local store. Next, if we go a little bit deeper into um, the advertising spend online, we see that a lot of the growth in online advertising is from Google and Facebook. A lot of the ad dollars are being spent on Google and Facebook. So if we look at the increases here, you'll see that Google grew 18% year on year from 14 to 15, which is when the data is from, and I imagine it would be even stronger today. And Facebook grew 59% year on year. Um, everything else online grew 13%. So we see that Google and Facebook is driving a lot of the online spend and a lot of the growth. And then the question would be why um, is, is a lot of the online advertising growth driving here? And I think this sort of brings together the two points is that the largest buying group is most active on social networks. And so you see uh, the time spent in that millennial age group audience on the various social networks that are out there. And you see that a ton of monthly minutes are being spent still on Facebook as the number one place with that audience. Now you see a lot of newcomers that are fairly uh, new in the grand scheme of things versus Facebook, like Snapchat, where you see a lot of monthly minutes and growing. And so I think when you look at sort of online advertising, how to spend your ad dollars, how to promote your business, I think it's very important to look at how we appeal to this buying group that's growing and where we connect our products to them at. And so if you ask the question sort of why um, people are spending money on Facebook, it's not in Google. It's not just because the audience is there, it's because that they can tailor their advertisements and their products. So uh, personalized is more about products um, is, is the next point I have. So when you consider that, obviously we live in the personalized product market. We know that our cu customers are willing to buy when they want to personalize. But not only should we personalize the product experience, but we should personalize the advertising experience. And so this really has to do with uh, understanding who your market is. So if you look down at the steps to success, I just want to sort of skip ahead to that point there, is we know who our market is, right? So when you entered today's class, you knew, hopefully, who you were selling to, who your customer is, or who you want your customer to be. Now, hopefully, you're looking at today's class and looking at the blank apparel styles and the decoration trends and say, which one of those actually match my market that I can start to roll into a product offering or a product strategy for that market. And then the next logical step of having um, that product crafted to that market is, okay, how do I get the messaging about the great product that I've created that creates value for that market? How do I get that to the market? And that's why we sort of move through this um, stages here of blank apparel to decoration and design now finally to marketing and sales. So when we say, how do I connect to that age group? How do I connect on products on social? Um, it's all about sort of the hyper-targeted marketing. So when you look at the uh, bolstered by statement there, always on connectivity. So we know that everybody's connected by their mobile phones. Actually, mobile phone uh, sales rates have um, stabilized. They're not growing as fast as they once were um, globally as well as here in the North American market because everybody's already connected with their smartphone device. So people are connected. Um, we know we can log on pretty much whenever, wherever, and interact with products as we're even in a doctor's office waiting. Next, why is that uh, spend happening? It's because of hyper-targeted marketing. And it's not only um, just targeted, it's hyper-targeted. And so what does that mean? That means when I look at um, email communications, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google AdWords, and even Snapchat geo filters, um, I can target by just about anything you can imagine. So with Facebook ads, um, the cool thing is when somebody logs in um, and sets up a Facebook account, we know they're creating their profile. 
and we know they're liking certain pages, they're interacting with certain pages, basically they're doing life on Facebook the way they do it anywhere else with what stores they shop at um, and everything about them. But the nice thing is it's captured digitally, there's data there, it's rolled up into the Facebook profile. Now when I look at somewhere like um, Instagram, Pinterest, wherever it may be, I can log in um, to those social sites with my Facebook profile. And so now, all of a sudden, that information carries to all these other social channels. So the idea here is that you can target a specific look, a specific product to that specific market through these social channels and render ads. Now, we don't have time in today's class to teach you exactly how to do all that. Um, we will, uh, moving in uh, through this year with Stalls TV, that's a focus area for us. Um, but the important thing is to know that that's a place you need to be researching. There's great tutorials even on uh, Facebook or um, Instagram. They want you to spend the money there on how to advertise and how to sort of hone your uh, strategy and your best practices to reach a market. It goes without saying that you should have a Facebook page for your business um, at this point. You should probably be on Instagram for your business, especially if you plan to sell products online through e-commerce more than just beyond um, the local market. So. Let's look specifically um, from this report. I want to talk um, about um, one of the, the things that happened um, specific to um, a Facebook or an Instagram ad. So basically, we're looking at sort of a sock design there that was Star Wars themed from the Stance Company. Um, basically, they were able to target this ad to adults whose interests include Star Wars movies, but excluded those interested only in specific Star Wars characters. Um, the Sock Wars campaign generated a 36% boost to return on ad spend. So in both cases, we're talking about um, imagery um, that features a product offering targeted through a specific group. Um, so the ad dollars are spent smartly and the return on investment uh, consequently is a lot higher. So if you don't have um, experience in this and you're saying, whoa, how do I do this? I would recommend um, looking for talent, whether it's through a freelance or whatever it might be, to execute advertising in this way for you in 2017 if you sell online. So once again, these are the steps um, that I recommend doing so you can connect products to uh, people. Any questions about that before we move on? I know this is a lot to digest in a short time. It will be recorded and posted online. Um, the next trend relative to sales and marketing that I want to point out is the way we shop is changing. So not only the way we connect products to people, but the way that people shop is changing. And so I thought this was interesting uh, when you look at a site like Pinterest. It's often used for finding products and shopping. So I read this study. I was, uh, it was crazy to me to think that 55% on the right there use Pinterest for finding or shopping for products versus just engaging or viewing photos. And so, of course, you know, as you're establishing your brand um, on Pinterest, if, you're, if it's something you want to do, which will allow you to drive traffic back to your website, you don't want to be so um, on with advertising in a traditional sense. It needs to be more native advertising. So it's, you know, just experiencing, sharing things that will help people, and then products will be featured throughout um, where they can get back and learn to do something or learn to buy. So it's interesting that 55% uh, of the audience on Pinterest um, uses it specifically to shop for products. Obviously, 12% of people use Facebook to shop for products, not a very high percentage, but we know um, they're on there, they're engaging with other things, so we can reach them uh, where they're at. So, seeing a lot of change uh, relative to that. Also, the way we um, can convert and visualize uh, products is changing. So, while not relative to apparel, I wanted to, this caught my attention. You know, if you look at the uh, website house, um, when you can, they, launch the ability where you can view an actual product that you've seen like a couch, whatever it might be, in your room through your smartphone. And so you see basically 50% of the users made a purchase that used this app to view the product in their room. So while I don't know that a product that's out there, you start to consider what does that mean to the buying experience overall. And so relative to an apparel decorator, I would say that you need to have a visualization tool online or when you're sending out emails and quotes, you need to be able to uh, create a virtual sample that shows somebody how the design will look on the garment. It sounds so basic, but a lot of people um, sort of have that separated and they just send a handwritten quote, but you know, being able to visualize and see the actual decoration on the garment is important. Should automatically be there when you send out a quote, but 
even uh, investing in technology to let customers visualize on your site or perhaps even design and create and change on your site is going to lead towards increased conversions of whatever product you sell. Next, um, just to keep on the theme that things are changing, the way we talk is changing. So you can see that um, if we look at the different generations and age groups and you can sort of figure out um, where you fit in and, and the way you like to be contacted is that you know when you look at Generation X, the baby boomers and uh, silent generation, those born before 1944, you can see most of them prefer telephone as a primary uh, communication device to be contacted um, to get products. When you look at um, Generation Y, which is basically um, millennials, uh, most of them are going to be preferred to be contacted um, online through web chat, through social media. So as you start to talk about how am I selling to these buying groups, even if we look at Generation X or Baby Boomers, you can see email and electronic messaging is right there. It's a pretty high uh, frequency of how you prefer to be contacted. So what I would say to that is not only do you need a social strategy when it comes to getting uh, people connected with your products, when you talk about how we deliver uh, sales conversations and customer service, um, the question is are you doing things uh, correctly for the market that you're reaching or do you need to rethink the way you communicate in 2017 uh, to better engage uh, with your customers in a way that they prefer because obviously that's going to convert to a better customer experience um, I would think a more uh, long-term customer with uh, repeat orders and increased sales. Next video is evolving so this is sort of the life cycle of video we went from live on TV right to on demand where you could play it when you want on YouTube then we went to semi live where you had a little bit of a lag time uh, but you could um, watch almost live video and now we're real live with things like uh, Facebook Live happening. So video is an extremely important part of marketing your business and selling uh, products and engaging with your customers. And the idea is that now you can do that um, on Facebook. If you have a page, you can stream out live to be able to sell products. This was just one example of somebody, um, an embroidery company in Europe, that was able to stream out sort of clearance inventory and be able to move personalized products that were embroidered and instantly connect out to their fans of their Facebook page. So once you build that audience, you have a ton of different ways that you can communicate with them to sell products. Use your creativity on how live streaming video can help you grow sales. Wouldn't it be better than just to sell to one customer, a one-on-one -on -one interaction to be able to broadcast out uh, whatever new product, new technique, um, that you have out and launch that to all of your followers. Um, an interesting uh, fact is that more users in the bottom, sort of middle of the design is what I wanted you to see, more users watch college football and MTV Music Awards on Snapchat than watch the events on TV. Um, that is just nuts to think about. So um, need to connect with your potential customers in an online format, even through video. So when we look at Snapchat, um, it's you know relatively new. Uh, to most of us, but you're starting to see a lot of um, engagement and you're starting to see the platform develop where there's actually a business case and marketing opportunities on Snapchat for you to connect the customers. So the specific way that I wanted to point out that I think um, can be leveraged by an apparel decorator is through um, is through like geofenced um, opportunity. So basically if you create a geo filter which is basically uh, this KFC image or this little logo or icon that's part of the design that goes over top of the uh, photo sharing on Snapchat, you can actually render that filter to a group of people within a certain geographic location. For instance, if I had a retail store I can create or have created a geo filter that can render to people within X mile of radius of my retail store to promote it. So when um, somebody is engaged on Snapchat, and we know it's sort of a growing market where millennials spend their time specifically, um, they'll be able to see some sort of filter about my shop or business. Now obviously nobody's going to want to take a photo with the name of your uh, business or shop and share it with their friends. There's really nothing shareable about that. So it's coming up with a concept uh, for utilizing this that people will want to share that will ultimately drive traffic to your retail store. I tend to think that event printing is a tremendous opportunity for this. So if you're at a 
Um, here's just another concept of looks. If you're at a concert or if you're at a sporting event and people want to commemorate sort of the event or where they're at, if it's at a university or, you know, it's a rivalry game, being able to take a photo that says East versus West rivalry game and then have your business logo that has get your custom shirts printed in booth whatever, if you're printing on-site at the event or if you're selling on-site at an event, I think it's a tremendous marketing tool to get foot traffic into an actual pop-up shop um, or retail location if you have one of those. And so here's an example where Dunkin' Donuts created a, a cool one where it could look like you're drinking a pumpkin to launch um, their new pumpkin coffee um, at stores. So when you uh, set this up, it's, it's a unique way to advertise. It's a pretty low cost way to advertise. Um, and if you're not connected um, on Snapchat, it's one of those newer um, social media uh, platforms that I would recommend um, taking a look at for 2017 and beyond. I think it's going to continue to grow. All right, any questions about the marketing and sales aspect of our trend report? Okay, you guys are a quiet group today. Hopefully, you were able to pick out something from today's class. I apologize for our rocky start, but you got the message if you were here right at the beginning. But we want to wish you a, a happy new year um, and luck with your business in 2017. Our job at Stalls TV here is to inspire you and then teach you how to grow your business. So as always, if you have questions, we have our Stalls TV forum. You can log on and ask them. And I just ask that you would uh, complete the survey when you log out of today's class. I'm hopeful that you picked up um, some tips that can help you grow your sales. Thanks for watching.